Hello and welcome to this video on Python internals. In this video, we will explore how Python runs your code, diving into the interpreter bytecode, and the CPython implementation. By understanding these core concepts, you'll gain a deeper appreciation for how Python works under the hood. Let's walk through how Python executes code step by step. The first step is lexical analysis where the code is broken down into tokens. These tokens are the smallest units of meaning in the language. Next comes parsing where these tokens are used to create an abstract syntax tree, or AST, which represents the structure of the code. After that, the Python code is compiled into bytecode and intermediate representation. Finally, the Python Virtual Machine, or PVM, executes this bytecode. Here's a simple Python function that we can use as an example. Def greet with the name as argument, return f hello, name. We can use the dis module to view the bytecode generated from this function. Now let's take a closer look at Python bytecode and the CPython virtual machine. Bytecode is a low-level, platform-independent representation of your code. It is stored in .pyc files, usually found in the underscore underscore pycache underscore underscore directory. Bytecode consists of instructions for the Python virtual machine, with each instruction being an operation code or opcode along with arguments. The CPython virtual machine is a stack-based virtual machine. Here is an example of bytecode output for the greet function we saw earlier. You can see instructions like load underscore global, load underscore fast, format underscore value, build underscore string, and return underscore value. Each instruction manipulates the stack and affects the program's execution. Now let's discuss the architecture of CPython. It can be viewed as a layered architecture. At the top, we have the Python source code with the .py extension. This code is then converted into an abstract syntax tree, or AST. The AST is then compiled into Python bytecode, which has a .pyc extension. Finally, the Python virtual machine, or PVM, executes this bytecode. Some of the key features of CPython include reference counting, which is the primary memory management mechanism. There is also the global interpreter lock, or GIL, which is a mutex that protects Python objects from concurrent access. CPython also provides a C extension API, which allows integration with C libraries for performance-critical code. Lastly, there is a garbage collector, which supplements reference counting by collecting cyclic garbage. While CPython is the most common implementation, there are alternative Python implementations available. CPython, written in C, serves as the reference implementation and is the one that most users run. Jython is a Python implementation that runs on the Java Virtual Machine, or JVM. PyPy is another implementation that features a just-in-time compiler for improved performance. Finally, IronPython is an implementation that targets the .NET framework in Mono. In summary, Python's execution model combines interpretation with compilation. Bytecode serves as the intermediate representation executed by the PVM. Python's architecture greatly influences Python's behavior and performance. Understanding these internals can help you write more efficient Python code. For further information, you can consult the Python Developer's Guide and the CPython source code on GitHub. Let's explore some tips for optimizing your Python code. First, try to use built-in functions and data structures whenever possible. Avoid global variables in performance-critical sections of your code. Use list comprehensions instead of loops when creating lists. Consider using number py for numerical operations, as it is highly optimized. Lastly, remember to profile your code to identify any bottlenecks. Here's a simple example of code optimization. The less efficient code block shows a function get squares that creates a list of squares using a loop. The more efficient code block shows the same task accomplished using list comprehension, which is generally faster. For even better performance, you could use a generator expression. If you like this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. 
Visit CodeLucky.com for more such useful content.